Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, wherever you are. We're Keen, Moana, and Tristan from the University of Hong Kong. I am Moana. And I'm Tristan. The two of us met at the Three Campus East Asia program, spending a semester each in Tokyo and Seoul before returning to Hong Kong. From WeChat to WhatsApp to Kakao Talk, we had experienced different communication platforms depending on where we were located geographically. We were most impressed by how Line grew from a project that was struggling in its own country to what we believe is the most successful Asian software. So here is an overview of what we'll cover today. First, Moana will introduce you to our case study and explain why it is important to study Line. We then highlight two major turning points in the trajectory of Line's development, namely the Tohoku earthquake in Japan and the launch of Line France. From these, we extract two success factors behind Line's impressive growth in Asia, and we also discuss the current challenges and recommendations in the conclusion. Finally, we'll proceed to share our takeaways from this study. I pass the time to Moana, who will give us a review of where Line stands today. Thank you, Tristan. With over 237 million monthly active users in 2021 and a billion stakers per day in 2022, Line, which is held by Naver from Korea and SoftBank from Japan, is one of the most popular communication apps in Asia. Initially, a purely instant messaging app, Line has now grown into a service provider of mobile payments, shopping, news, healthcare, and other entertainment. During the COVID-19 pandemic, it has been utilized by the Japanese government for disseminating updates on the health information in the country. It is truly always at your side. In this case study, we're focusing on three key questions. First, as the world gained increased interconnectivity and closer relationships between people from different regions, we seek to understand how LINE rise to internet involvement and play a role in the global transformation of communication. Second, LINE is a special tech firm with Asian origins. The contemporary world has witnessed so many technological platforms and softwares from Western countries, especially the United States. In this industrial landscape, LINE is undoubtedly a success story that all Asians could celebrate. Finally, we dig into the nuanced story of LINE. Many people's impression of LINE is an application born and raised in Japan. However, it was founded by foreigners of this major cooperating country. We dive into the turning points that led to this success. We believe that the case of LINE is very significant for us especially amidst the fourth industrial revolution. In this ever-changing world, new ventures and initiatives would mushroom with technological advancement, as attested by the metaverse and blockchain hype. For business leaders, the case of LINE will discuss how it's innovated to meet user demand at major turning points. As a result, LINE's business function expanded and their operation regions broadened as well. This could shed light on how firms may ride the tide and succeed in today's world. For LINE users and students, the rise of line would make an interesting backstory to learn about and could serve as a valuable point of reference in the tech industry. As mentioned previously, line is actually the brain builder of Naver, a technology giant that is often referred to as the Google of Korea. However, in Korea's instant messaging market, they have lost to Kakao, who had the first move advantage as they were launched in March 2010. They took a leap of faith and looked to Japan. How did line get from where it started out to where it is today? Moving forward, Tristan will examine two major turning points which defined LINE's success. Thanks, Moana. So this is the development timeline of LINE with major milestones included. As you can see, we identified four of them, but in the interest of time, I will focus on the first two here for today. The first turning point we would like to highlight here is the Tohoku earthquake in 2011. As many of you may remember, on the 11th of March that year, Japan was struck by a triple disaster. First an earthquake, followed by a tsunami, and then an accident at a Fukushima nuclear power plant. In this process, a lot of people in Japan's Tohoku region have been displaced. With power outages and disruption in telephone services, communication between family members and friends has been a challenge in the aftermath of the disaster, especially when they were trying to relocate and also rebuild the region. Naver was quick to discover the practical need of survivors and evacuees for instant communication services. NHN Japan's chairman, Lee Hei-jin, was inspired to launch an application for smartphones, tablets, and personal computers that would provide free IM and calling services based on the data network. Two months later, the application was launched as LINE in June. The free voice calls came to be a strong selling point for LINE, and they also benefited from superior cultural knowledge of Japan and 
a bigger corporate budget for marketing. These factors helped them win over cacao in Japan. By the end of 2013, Line has become Japan's largest social network with more than 50 million users and a global application with more than 300 million registrants worldwide. The second turning point is the launch of Line France, a series of cartoonistic characters I'm sure most of you are familiar with. They were initially created for Line sticker function, which is in some way an extension of the existing emoji function. Stickers allow for more vivid expression of the user's mood. Line is a trendsetter in this regard, as their stickers function has been adopted by almost all of the other major messaging platforms, such as Signal, Telegram, and WhatsApp. The first generation of Line France was designed by Korean designer Kang byung mok This included Kony, Brown, Moon, and James, who were introduced in 2011. They became immensely popular in 2013 after the release of Line Offline, a short anime series. Since then, many brands have been fighting to collaborate with Line for crossovers, bringing additional revenue to the company while also increasing their visibility. 2017, Line collaborated with the world-renowned K-pop group BTS to release a new generation of characters known as BT21. The character designs were based on original ideas and sketches by the group's members, and this helped Line further expand into the market of K-pop fans. Throughout Line's development, we believe that there are two major factors behind their success. First, they have been able to choose the right battlefield in which they could make the most out of the market. Knowing that they will not be able to outcompete the market incumbent, how within Korea, Line, uh, and actually neighbor as well, they took a leap of faith and decided to try it out in Japan. Not only did they find success in this country of over 100 million people, from Japan they branched out to other countries and claimed the top spot in Thailand and Taiwan as well. Second, Line made the smart decision to invest in peripheral products, especially the Line France character. It generated two additional forms of revenue. First, on the B2C level, many fans were willing to spend money on paid stickers within the line application and also merchandise products. Second, on the B2B level, line was able to earn much from crossovers and collapse with other brands. More importantly, these characters became the face of line itself and helped maintain a strong fan base. Here, it is worth noting that the success of line friends reflect a unique aspect of Asian market. Compared to Western markets, consumers in Korea are more fond of cute or kawaii elements in the product. Line has been able to take advantage of this within the Asian market. And now pass the time back to Moana, who will continue with the conclusion. Thank you, Tristan. Next, I'll take over to talk about the current challenges faced by Line and our recommendations. First, the instant messaging market is largely saturated now. Most people already have a social media or instant messaging account, so there are few new users that Line could tap into. Moreover, people are likely to choose an app simply because everyone else around them are using it. Given existing platforms, including WeChat, WhatsApp, Kakao, who all have a dominating area, further extending abroad would be a feat. Therefore, Line must continue to innovate to set itself apart from other applications. Telegram is a great example of a rising instant messaging app that boasts its guaranteed security. The second caveat is Line's comprehensiveness. Its various features makes it one of the most complicated instant messaging applications on the market. For the same reason, however, a segment of consumers may prefer simpler alternatives with a cleaner user interface. The complexity of Line distanced itself from the older generation with less expertise in digital technologies. Our recommendation to this problem would be a vision of the clean version of the app, just the instant messaging software and nothing more. This would provide an accessible option for the elderly and a lighter version for the minimalistic. To tackle both problems at once, Line may refine existing features to create its own ecosystem with something for different kinds of clients. To wrap up, Line is more than just a messaging tool. It has transformed the lives of many people and allowed us to maintain close relations with one another even when the pandemic keeps us apart. When we think of Line, it is more than just a Korean brand or Japanese brand. It is an Asian brand that all of us could be proud of. Next, we share what each of us have learned from studying the case of Line. Thank you, Moana. So for me, the most important takeaway is that we should be aware of the first mover advantage, especially when talking about a product with great inertia like communication platforms. 
thing is, once people around you start using a certain platform or application, you will likely join the same platform to be able to communicate with them. And it will be difficult for you to try to jump out of it. The first mover advantage was what defined the initial failure of Line in Korea and its eventual success in Japan or beyond. Because Macau, because Kakao already had the first mover advantage in Korea, it was difficult for Line to build itself in Korea's instant messaging market. However, they were able to take the first spot in Japan and also branch into other countries in Asia, as we have mentioned. We can also see other examples of companies who were failing to be the first movers, like Signal, who is competing against WhatsApp, and also Instagram Reels, which marketed itself as an alternative to TikTok as a provider of short videos and so on. We are now living in a fast moving world and anything could happen. You may have a great idea, but if you're too slow in implementing it, someone else may have taken the first spot already. So my lesson is that we should put our thoughts into action as soon as we see a viable plan. In addition to the first mover advantage, another lesson I would like to highlight is the continuous drive. Neighbors did not give up in all the difficulties they encountered. When they could not compete in the current market in Korea, they jumped out of the box, took the leap of faith, and seek room elsewhere. They finally ended up successful in Japan. Even with their success today, Naver did not idle. Instead, it expanded across geographies and launched a wide range of features to remain competitive. It is also illuminating to reflect on the story from the side of the cow. Had it entered the Japanese market earlier or had thought outside the box, it could have been also been recognized as an Asian instant messaging app. These are our references in this case paper and the presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you.